Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. Hello and welcome to Share Shootout, the most vicious stock picking show on television here on CNBC Africa. I'm Bruce Whitfield. In our quest to oust the three week long champion Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics, we've combed through some of the sharpest minds on the market. Okay, we got my, my, Mark Witten, but you know, we got him. From Kaizen AM, no pressure on Mark Witten. We got Mark Mark, which makes me the funky bunch, I suspect. <laughs> Although we have the outfits, and what's become a feature on the show, Mark Witten, is Mark Ingham's outfits. Um, because he deliberately dresses like the guys you see on the pages of GQ magazine, <laughs> but nobody ever has the courage to dress like that. Do you admire his dress sense? Do you admire his dress sense? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think yeah, it's, it's always good to, uh, to stand out from the crowd. He's standing out from the crowd, that's exactly what we do. Mark and Mark <laughs> will be battling it out for a battle of the wits and the coveted prize. The most compelling stock picker tonight will win ownership of Sibanya Gold, Beatrix Shaft, which recently caught fire. The least convincing stock picker has to go and douse the fire. That seems like a fair enough deal. Our guests have pre-picked three shares, neither knows what the other holds at some point during proceedings. However, they must pick at least one of their competitors' stocks. The longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to pick something they really don't like. Each has 30 seconds to argue their stock pick, we then interrogate their choice, and it either gets shot down, blown up, or accepted. That's how Share Shootout is won. So let's let the Share Shootout begin, because you haven't been here for a while. I'm mm. gonna let Mark begin, Mark, if you mm. don't mind. Mark, you don't mind, Mark? Not Mark, you don't mind? Mark doesn't mind, Mark doesn't mind, awesome. So marking your 30 seconds on your first pick this evening, which is, ELB Group, what did they do? They're in process engineering. They've also got uh, very specialist machinery as well. They work in Asia Pacific, they work throughout Africa. They've been listed for a good number of years. They've shown 20 odd percent compound growth in earnings over the last five years. And they went through the global financial crisis without any hiccup whatsoever. So very specialist niches, therefore pretty good barriers to, to entry, terrific order book and pretty good cash flow too. And it's a small uh, investor's pick but you can get hold of stock. Yeah, a billion rand market capitalization. Mm -hmm. Is this one that you like, Mark? I think the business model, is, as what Mark just described, is, is a reasonably good little business. However, that's the key, is that it's quite a small business. Um, and, and as such, the liquidity is very difficult for investors to trade in and out of. Big, 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 it is family. For big guys, but if you've got 10 or 20 grand and you want to have a punt on a nice little bit of a go-go share, sure. do you what, go what for I'm, What I'm getting at is that the price discovery in the share mm -hmm. is often not, not as, as, as rigorous as you'd like. Um, it is pretty much still quite, quite, quite closely held, family controlled. Um, it has split from the, the other ELB group, uh, which is Bateman's, um, which had a lot of hiccups in, in Africa and in, in India. So I think that's, that, that stands to be seen whether they'll but continue. But you can't confuse the two. And no, you can't. Five one year, is six year track record. No, but, th but that's the, the point. I mean, I, as soon as I saw ELB, I thought ELB Bateman, didn't yes. I? Yes. And no, one is that history comes yes. back. Yeah, one is more construction and, mm. and, and process engineering, plant engineering, rather than this, which is more actual equipment supply. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's not a bad business. Truthfully, I think at this point in the cycle, if you're looking for exposure to mining capex, the likes of ballers, et cetera, stand out for me more as a, as, as a value type. Why pick. would you go for this ELB group as opposed to a ballers? Because it gives you exposure to a particular aspect that you can't get in South Africa. It's like a fluor, which is a big US process engineering company. And so if you're looking for a similar thing, and they compete with the majors, often in joint venture. So it gives you a South African flavor, but with a good dollar income. Okay, again, there's, it's a big mm. theme that Mark Ingham goes on is the dollar income aspect mm. of it. Also, with Bollywood, you get lots of other stuff. I don't want to own mo motor dealerships. I don't want to own those sorts of businesses. Um, I look at car sales numbers, I'm not that excited by them. Mm. Bollywood, World, yes, big yellow trucks and equipment, very sexy caterpillar equipment, all that sort of mm. stuff. But as a niche play, ELB group, is it one you consider or do you shoot it down? Take a risk and shoot yeah, it down. Yeah, if I was... <laughs> If I was managing a very small amount of money, for a, then I would potentially take a small punt. But okay, so your uh, own I, I, money. Uh, my let's, own let's money. Let's assume it's your own money. No, I don't. I don't trade anything that illiquid, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think as a business model, it's not a bad business. So it's hard for me to shoot the business down. But as a listed we're company, shoot, we're not shooting the business down. But no, we're as a the listed company, down, yeah. then no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't own it because I wouldn't. You know, you can't trust the the, the actual underlying price because it's so easily manipulative. Okay, yeah. could could be easily manipulated. But you like the business. You like the business model. Mm. You don't like the share the share gets shot down. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Your share is shot down. Loves the business though. Nice face, pity about whatever else, the personality of the business on that particular front. So therefore, Mark Whitten, let's go from Kaizen AM to your first pick this evening, which is the 
very voluptuous 60 billion rand, 25 times market cap of Woolworths. Mm. Okay, 30 well, seconds, start now. Basically, I mean, there's, there's a few reasons we like Woolworths. One is that um, it is a price setter in the market, so it's not a price taker. They play at a very niche level. Secondly, the acquisition of the witchery brand by MO in Australia was timed almost to perfection as that market is starting to, re to recover. And they're now getting the throughput necessary to, to really get that clothing range sorted in terms of getting money out of inventory, getting cash out of inventory. They're reinvesting 2 to 3% on the gross margin to drive products. So Woolworths has gone from being a niche sort of food player to being more of a supermarket. They're driving the basket size. It's become a, it's, it's become a trolley shop. 30 and seconds mm, are up. It's cruel, sure. isn't it? Hey, mm -hmm. that's our fastest thing move. Becoming a trolley shop. It's becoming like ShopRite, isn't it, Markingham? Well, it, it's trying to be at the upper LSM group, I, I guess. But, you know, I've run these numbers for the last few years, and they're getting close to cruising altitude insofar as that margin increment is concerned. So you're paying a very steep price for the expectation of, uh, of that being sustained. Okay, when mm. you talk about margins and the sort of margins that they can charge, and boy, do mm. they push the margins. But they, they, I mean, you're going to, to record altitude, but what about going stratospheric? Because Woolies has got, to my mind anyway, looking at the lack of competition in the market, that opportunity to take those margins stratospheric. I think so. I think, like I said, you know, they're reinvesting 2 to 3% to the top line to drive volumes. And you're going to see, you know, their costs are staying reasonably well contained, and that 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 increase, uh, you know, in between in operating margin will continue in our mind. Um, at the same time, you know, if I look at the rest of the retailers, or I look at some of the other companies I can buy out there, this is trading to me on comfortably a 15 forward PE, and I see a lot of excess cash being generated. You know, for us, management is always crucial, and we rate Ian Moore as probably one of the best retailers. You, the I mean, D David Sussman, uh, Simon Sussman, I beg your pardon, I get my Sussmans mixed up. They don't mm. even, I don't think they've ever even met. Um, Simon Sussman, the former chief executive, highly rated, but a very, very good appointment in Ian Moore to run Woolworths. Forward PE of 15 times. You compare that to global companies of the same quality, there's no, I mean, 15 no, multiple and, is and, cheap. And, on this and there's no, I mean, you haven't even begun to price in what we believe will be, you know, sustainable su expansion into Africa. You know, yeah. they're very cautious about how they're expanding. But I think going forward, they, they will be able to continue growing top line between 12 and 15 percent, bottom line 20 percent. Come or on, take. you can't shoot this one. No, down. I'm not. I don't dispute it. In fact, I accept it. You accept it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. He's such With a pushover. Yes. Oh. I can't believe it. He's got he, you. You've got him in the palm of your hand, eating out of the palm mm. of your hand. <laughs> Woolworths Holdings gets the the big firm thumbs up then from Mark Ingham this evening. Uh, Woolworths Holdings, of course, listed on the JSE with a dividend yield of two and a half percent, or thereabouts, a forward PE of about 15 times. Mark Ingham, on to your next one which is if you think ELB group is tiny he's, mm. he's going minuscule on you this evening what is your next minuscule pick it looks like Crooks Brothers to me yes this is a, a mini Yolovo if you will <coughs> been around for a good number of years but it's not just sugarcane it's also into fruit and mm. other forms of farming a big UK uh, investment manager just recently picked up 30% of the company they have a focus on Africa and the agricultural growth story throughout Africa this is a regional story Good, uh, good cash generation, 20% compound earnings growth over the last five years. Why is 30% foreign ownership of this company good for for minority shareholders? Ilova took on a mm. 50, sorry about the clock, you've finished so quickly and I'm interrupting. Uh, Ilova took on a 50 something percent shareholder. I don't think minority shareholders have really benefited from that, have they? It still trades a, a good few hundred million a year. Um, but um, <coughs> they took that stakeholding from RMB, who mm. wanted to okay. divest. This is a specialist in investment manager. <coughs> so I think they, they see good potential future in this company. I do. And the, the earnings tell their story. And it's only on a slight premium to NAV. Okay. Mm. What you think, however, no longer matters because it's what he thinks that matters, Mark Whitten. Mm. Crooks Brothers, do you like it? The Mini Yolovo. I actually do like the business. Um, I think that the African expansion story is, is, is definitely, you can see the art grows coming back in the likes of Zimbabwe and, and Mozambique. Um, I, I think once again, it's, it's highly liquid, so it's very difficult to play. But you know, theoretically, if you want to play Africa and the big themes of food, water, and energy, then this is one that you'd sort of want to look at from a private equity point of view. The reason I like it is I think potentially it could be taken out going forward. Now, but the thing is, it was taken out. It was sitting with RMB as a big mm. shareholder. It's now got a big institutional shareholder yes. in the UK. The specialist fund managers. Who are these people? Silver, yeah. Uh, uh, Silver Street. 
Silver Stream. Silver Stream. Yes. Um, what, when you say they're specialists, what, what kind of specialists they have are they? A, they have a microcosmic focus on Africa and particularly agriculture. And they did okay. their homework. They said, where can we get exposure other than where we have current exposure, which is typically unlisted entities. Okay. And this met all their criteria. Okay, so it's a li in the listed space, though. It met their criteria. Mm. It is, again, for a punter with 100,000 Rand mm. who wants to have a good punt on an Africa growth story with a specialist fund manager sitting in the background this one sounds like it's a goodie. Yeah, I think if you if you have this sort of fundamental longer term view that, you know, in terms of A, Africa being the place to be and B, agriculture, then I think this is one to hold. But I, I wouldn't say that this is a, a, in any way a trading position. I'd say if you're going to buy this, be prepared to sit with it for no. between five and seven years. Mm. But on the basis of that, I would probably say, yeah. But if you're going to buy an Africa theme, you've mm. got to be prepared to sit on these things for five to seven years. Well, there yeah. isn't really a, I can't see a trading opportunity unless you're going, mm. you're trading African well, gold shares or something. No, or African I, gold I, think, or something. I think Africa is, is, is long time and mm. short money and, and the rest of the world is long money and short time. And that's <laughs> where the, the trade is met. So I think, yeah, you, you would need to take, a, it's almost like a private equity bet. You would need yeah. to take a three to five year view minimum before you'd see any sort of improvement in, in, the, in that discount to NAV. Which is fine. Mm. So is this one that you're willing on that basis, with all these caveats to accept, or are you willing to wait for his last challenging share this well, evening? If his last challenging share is, is, is also a micro cap, then I kind of for me it's difficult to play these counters. I, but I, yeah, I would, I would I, take this I, on a theme. You would take so it on, on the theme. theme on, the, on the food theme and the energy theme and the, you know, the Africa theme. I think this is, is definitely a, 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 a Potentially, like I said, a proper private equity takeout further down the line. His next company is not huge, but it's not a micro cap. All right. So uh, you may regret actually uh, choosing uh, Crooks Brothers, but it's a good theme. It's a good company. It's got a nice shareholding. Yeah. And Mark Ingham, your Crooks Brothers pick has been accepted. Right. I'm seeing a bit of a theme developing here. Mm. So Woolworths was your first pick. Mm. Your second pick is the 103 billion rand, 28 times uh, historical multiple ShopRite Holdings. Mm. I think um, based on what we've just been discussing about Africa, I think if you're taking a view as to which retailer is going to be expanding not only the fastest, but also in, in terms of they've, they've paid their dues in Africa. Um, going forward, if you look at the population growth coming out of Nigeria and Angola, etc., you know, I think ShopRite is best positioned for that. You also have, you know, very strong operational efficiencies on the lower LSM level. So, you know, it, it, like Whitey Basson once said, people can either sort of, you know, eat less or spend more. So I, I do believe that PE will unwind going forward. And I think if you're looking for a theme of emerging markets and India going forward, I think, you know, ShopRite's the place to be. Are you sorry now that you picked uh, Woolworths? You said Woolworths gave the Woolworths the thumbs up, or can you, f can you fight with them about ShopRite? No, I think Mark's being very conventional in his choices over here. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, with that comes a my price. Choices, my choices are my choice of dress as well. Uh, oh, no, absolutely, no, very conventional. <laughs> Although there is a little pink candy stripe, which is very outlandish, <laughs> a, bit, a bit outrageous. And, uh, and of course, he's betting on, on Mr. Besson, who can walk on water. Um, and could be uh, walking fairly soon, because, I mean, he's not doing this for the money anymore. Uh, quite. Yeah, um, yes. So it doesn't meet Mark criteria, in fact, um, particularly uh, with the value aspect uh, to it. So I would, uh, I would not be taking this. If I was putting fresh money in, I, I would not be purchasing. But the, the valuation on ShopRite and the valuation on Woolworths are not vastly different. It, they're not vastly different. He has uh, Woolies on a 25 times historical multiple, ShopRite's on 28. It's much of a much I, I think, in terms of I think with space. respect to Woolies, they're redefining their value proposition uh -huh. in the market from what they customarily were associated mm. with. Okay. And so from that, I'm prepared to give them the pip over ShopRite, and I would shoot ShopRite down, the Africa which theme, is more of the same. The Africa theme, which is where ShopRite has gone, where p nobody else has been prepared to trade for the last 15 years, and they have been the trailblazers in the space, earned their stripes their candy stripes and all, all other stripes as well, have done exceptionally well in s setting the trend for African retail investment. Surely they're ahead on that particular front and there's only growth ahead there. I think Woolworths will uh, pander to the aspirational aspect of many Africans, increasingly more than ShopRite will be able mm. to do. You've got, you got 12 seconds to have one last gasp. No, I think, I, think, I think, first of all, Whitey's going nowhere. I think he's, he's made it his, his goal to be one of the biggest retailers in the world. And I think, secondly, it's a copy and paste business model that works, and it works very efficiently locally. They're so far ahead of their competitors in terms of central distribution, logistics, etc. You know, transporting this best practice into Africa I do believe if anybody's looking for an African theme globally or locally, this is going to be the, the one to own. The, the one difficulty is they have is supply chains. You don't mm. have the logistics capability that you are used to but in that's South Africa. They did, you know, that's why they did the rights issue of $8 billion, And they're building in Angola, they're building in Namibia, they'll be building in, in, in Nigeria, you know, 
proper distribution centers, centralized distribution centers, which they've perfected locally first. We have to you stop there because we're short on time. But Mark, I'm, I'm getting a startling sense that you're not going for this one. No, I've, I've heard the story and I'm not convinced about it. Okay, there we go. It's being shot down, shop right shot down. He wouldn't do it to Whitey Bazan's face, I don't think. Um, <laughs> you might be surprised. Well, you? Might you? Okay. Yes. Well, Whitey, no, I'm not <laughs> buying your story. <laughs> that is halfway through the show, or two-thirds of the way through the show. Before we take a quick break, let's just revisit where we've gone. Mark Whitten from Kaizen AM, Woolworths Holdings, on a multiple of 24 times. Get the big thumbs up from Mark Ingham this evening, so Woolworths gets the thumbs up. But as you heard, ShopRite Holdings doesn't get, uh, get nearly the same support. Mark Ingham simply doesn't buy the ShopRite Holdings story. Yes, it has been a remarkable performer over the last 10 years. It's been probably one of the top 10 best shares on the Jay-Z. You could have done better in very few places other than ShopRite. Is it, however, going to outperform Woolworths in the next 10? Mark Ingham doesn't think so. Uh, and then Mark Ingham's picks this evening, ELB Group, as opposed to E.L. Bateman, the construction company. This is more an equipment supply. Uh, says Mark Whitten, he would rather be going for the more conventional candy stripe of Barlow World on this particular front and going for the reliable Caterpillar equipment. So no, ELB Group gets the big thumbs down. Too illiquid, not enough price discovery, can be manipulated. He sees high risk in that particular space. Not so, says Mark Ingham. Crooks Brothers, however, the mini Elovo, a market cap of under 700 million rand. That takes his fancy, does, uh, does uh, Mark Whitten on Crooks Brothers. He gave it a tentative thumbs up because he doesn't know what's coming up next. And nor do you, which is why you need to stick around as we go and have a short commercial break. We have more punches. None will be pulled on the other side of this particular break. Stay tuned.